things that are happening, but we are your watchmen. And we thank you, Father, for this call tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jenny from Australia. Um, welcome. We just want to welcome everybody to, um, to Reset COVID-19, a set time. <laughs> and uh, thank you for being in, uh, coming into this call. And we just want to just say, for those of you that aren't uh, fully uh, uh, aware or participating in the Global Watch, that we are a community of watchmen. And, uh, and it is not just um, an anonymous name and uh, a country where you're from, but we are, God is one of the important characteristics of a watchman is that he joins us together in relationship. And um, in this COVID-19 season that we've had, it is, um, it's more clear than ever that we are a community and it is wonderful to be able to connect with people, not just by audio, but by video as well. And so um, we're just delighted to have you with us today. And um, I would like to turn things over to my wonderful wife who has prepared a, 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 a teaching for us. And then we will also all have the chance to participate uh, at some point in the hour. So Susan, do you want to introduce us to this topic and uh, tell us a little bit about what your what's on the docket for today? Sure. Well, this is this is an amazing time, wouldn't you say? I this is every day that goes by. I'm saying to Lord, I don't want to miss it, Lord. What is it today? And um, I remember back in 2018 um, at Heronhut, I had a vision of the Lord um, seated on the throne and there was this book out before him uh, and he was writing very furiously with fire in his eyes and then all of a sudden he stopped and he turned the page and I heard the word reset and I spoke that out at the meeting at that time and sat down and Daniel Lynn was sitting next to me from IHOP and he said you have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I said, that's right. I have no idea what I just said. But um, definitely we are in a time of shift, a time of change, and we are all seeing it before our very eyes. I don't have to explain that very much. And um, you know, we've listened to a lot of the prophets coming out with various words uh, that, which are filled with wisdom and wonderful. Uh, quite diverse, but the Lord has had me in uh, one page on this, and um, and it might have been what He was showing me that night in Heronhut. The page turned and it was blank, but His pen was in His hand and it is about to write something, and. Um, <clears throat> I uh, have been pondering about this term reset for, since then, for about two years, and I really believe we've been in a season of reset that has really intensified since last fall when this um, COVID-19 broke out in China. Um, if we look at the dates that that transpired, um, I think we could find some very significant dates from the Feast of Tabernacles in Israel to Christmas to uh, Easter here and a Passover. And this virus has hit the earth right at this time. And so I feel like we are in the crosshairs of something that the Lord wants our attention to. And um, can we laser beam this reset a little bit more? And I, I looked up the word reset in the Bible and interestingly enough, it's not there. <laughs> But what is there is a set time. And that um, has been a, me a meaningful word for us for some time. And I wanted to, I felt like the Lord was saying, if you understand the set time, you will understand the reset that I'm speaking to people now. And so this morning, I want to take some time to review what that set time is, what it means for us biblically, and what it means for us today, because then I think the reset comes into order in a more defined place. And so I thank you all for coming on and joining us this morning. Let's agree that the, the watchmen today, we're going to sharpen each other up. 
Um, so I'm going to speak for a little bit here, but then we're going to go into some breakout groups. And uh, I'd like you to discuss some things. We'll direct that. But as we finish, I think we'll have a corporate expression and understanding of what um, what this season is about. I hope that's my our goal in calling this to mo this morning. So let's take a look at um, what this uh, set time means. Um, we are in the second month, the second Hebraic ecclesiastical month of the year. And um, <clears throat> it is also uh, a time, a set time of the Lord. If you look historically at um, this, what the appointed time, set times means in the Bible, it's quite, um, it brings to light what the meaning of this set time means. It's the, the Hebrew word is moed. And the first time it appears is in um, Genesis 1.14. It says, let there be lights in the firmaments of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. In other words, it's to give, um, uh, the lights in the firmament, the sun, the moon, the stars are all meant to help give uh, understanding to the seasons that God is drawing us into. In John 1, 1 John 1, 5 said, um, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So in other words, this moed presents itself first in the majesty of God. Moed times are times where the manifest majesty of God becomes very, very evident to us. And that is a very solid theme throughout scriptures. In fact, um, <clears throat> when it appears again, it is about God bringing his covenant purposes into place. Um, in Genesis 17, 21, it says, but my covenant, I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you, at this set time next year. So it's about the majesty of God, experiencing and seeing the full majesty and wonder of God, and also about establishing his covenant. So what does that mean for us today? <clears throat> and as I mentioned, we are in the uh, second Hebraic month. And um, I think it carries a lot of weight. Uh, for this particular time as the culmination, it seems like we're coming to the apex of this COVID-19 um, pandemic across the nations. And uh, it is a set time internationally. It's a global set time, much like 9-11 was. I don't think there's been anything that has been as disruptive <clears throat> since 9-11 as this is. And God has allowed it. And why? That's why we're here today, trying to listen, trying to hear from the Lord and from each other. Why is this disruption? Lord, what are you saying in the midst of it? Not only that, but we are in the midst between Passover and Pentecost. There is so much converging on this that our hearts must hit this target in, in a very specific way. But let's look at scripturally what happens in the second month of the year. And just as an anecdote, I found out last night that, you know, uh, May 14th, 1948 is the uh, Israel um, Independence Day. That is also in the second month. It just happened last Wednesday. So and the second month is a very significant month. Listen to this. You know, how many have heard of the ninth of Av when both temple the, the, the first temple and the second temple were, they were destroyed on the same day, historically. Not in the same year, but the same day. Did you realize that the first temple and the second temple, they were basically began work on them the same day, in the second month. And um, I have a PDF that I will um, try to put up by the end of this thing that will explain this. But Solomon began to build the first temple on the um, <clears throat> first of I, 
uh, first of the IR, which is the month that we are, I, we are in, in, it says in, excuse me, second day, second Chronicles 3, 2. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. That's Solomon. Then uh, skip ahead a few hundred years to um, uh, Ezra. Zerubbabel and Joshua the priests and the Levites began the work of building of the second temple. Now, in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of God in Jerusalem, they began to do the work of the Lord on the in repairing the temple. So both temples were began work in the second month. In fact, the second of IR was last Wednesday or last Sunday. And so we are in a very significant time. God sent manna to the children of Israel after the Exodus uh, in the second month. Then the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And we just passed through this time of Passover. They weren't um, more than three days in, in the wilderness when they started complaining. Then the Lord God who heals you showed up and uh, the waters of um, Marah wa were uh, cleansed and they had something to drink. They then came to what is presently known as Elat, it's termed Elam in the Bible. And uh, there they stayed until God directed them to go forth. But manna came on the second month, just after the Passover. Now in Numbers 1.1, 1, 1, um, they were still uh, not yet set out into the wilderness, but God uh, called Moses into the tabernacle of meeting. And there he said, take a census of Israel. Why? Because God was going to give him very specific instructions on how to take 600,000 people on their journey into their promised land. And um, he was very, very specific. What I, I was loved about this is that um, he spoke specifically uh, about each tribe. And the first three tribes he talked about was Judah, then Issachar, and then Zebulun. And if you look at that, these are the tribes that led them out. They were the front spear of the whole movement into the, into the wilderness. Judah, the praisers. Issachar, those who knew the signs on the seasons. They were the second. They were the second tribe named. And who followed them were Zebulun, the men of war. That is a message for us today. Judah goes first. Our praises go first. And secondly, we try to discern the times and the seasons. And then we go to war. So... <clears throat> This is all very significant. That was on the first day of the second month, which would have been a week ago today. Moses was called into the tabernacle of meeting. And uh, finally, this month, the second uh, Passover the, uh, the, of the second month was instituted by Moses. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, if any one of you or your posterity is unclean, because of a corpse or is far away on a journey, he may keep, still keep the Lord's Passover on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They may keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Um, Hezekiah also reinstituted re the uh, Passover the second month during his reformation. Why? Because the priests weren't ready. The people were not ready. And we are entering into that second month period for the Passover. Um, and I hope that we are getting ourselves ready for what is to come. This whole month is like a narrow passageway into the purposes and promises of God. And so this calling away unto us, calling us up to him, is a time where he is he's saying, please, I want to meet with you. I am ready to speak to you. I want your full attention. Get rid of the distractions, Western world. Get rid of the distractions. He is wanting to meet with us. In fact, the word moed is throughout scriptures. There's, I think, 223 mentions of it. Yeah. Do you know that 150 times 
the great majority of time that Moed appears in the Old Testament, it is translated as the tent of meeting. So Hosea 9.5 says, what will you do in the appointed day and the day of the feast of the Lord? That is the question for us today. I'm just, I just painted the context of today and the biblical foundations of the second month. But the set time is upon us. There is so much converging right now. And I'm going to bring up a few points that I've, I, I, I've been gleaning from just swimming around this Exodus picture and the Israelites getting massively delivered through the Red Sea. Can you imagine being there and God showed you, you're being crushed by the enemy behind you and there's this sea right before you and you step into the sea and the waters part. Can you imagine being part of that company and seeing the majesty of God right before your eyes? That just makes me quiver. They get to the other side safely and they sing a song of joy and they get all praised and happy, but they weren't but three days into the wilderness when they start complaining. And I feel like today the Lord is calling us to the same place. This plague has been upon the entire earth, shaking the economies of the earth. And he's saying, will you trust me? Will you meet with me? Because I long to meet with you. Put away your distractions. For I have words to speak to you individually and corporately. The voice of the Lord will strip the forest bare. My prayer is that, God, would you strip us bare and restructure us reset us on the course that you have mindsets he's dealing with our mindsets life as usual is not there and i don't think it's going to be there when we get out of this thing i hope it i hope we aren't there i hope we're doing the new thing that he is birthing this very moment in each of your hearts in each of our families and in our communities and in our churches there is a new thing that he is trying to birth. He is trying to speak to the church. I had a word early on that this virus thing is gonna be with us until the heart of the church, God deals with the heart of the church. And I don't mean that in a pointing finger negative way. I mean it in a very loving way. He is wooing us into his court. <coughs> so, our basic response is to go into that tent of meeting. A set time is basically a time where the Lord has, and he has really crushed us in this. He has really crushed us to, into the tent of meeting. <laughs> so all our good things, all of our things that we are, hold so dear, he's saying, release it into my tent of meeting because I'm going to restructure, I'm resetting the dial today. Um, <clears throat> so enough of that. I think you guys get the idea. We've all been there. But um, so this number one response is to set a time, that time to be, meet with him because he is speaking to us and he is wanting to secondly remove the old things so that the new thing can give birth. At the appointed time, uh, Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael away according to God's instructions so that Isaac could come forth. God cares for all uh, about our mistakes and our presumptions of the past, but he can use them for his good. The wounds of the past season must become the scars of wisdom for the future. It's vital, it, it, I believe all of us, and my prayer is I, I, I want the fullness of this. It's a Zechariah 3 moment where Joshua, the high priest is before the Lord and Satan is right there. 
accusing Joshua before the Lord. And the Lord basically says, enough! Give him a clean turban and give him a clean mantle. You don't need to wear that anymore. Listen, everybody has been tested with anxiety, with discouragement, weariness, lies, deception, intimidation, rejection is huge, especially for the prophetic. Now the time of favor has come because your voices will be heard. And this is the, the year of the mouth of the Lord. It must speak. I'm speaking to you who know I, that a word of truth is in you and you've not been heard. I'm saying this is the hour that it must come forth. This is the hour where the words of the watchman must be sent forth. And we are trying to make pathways and platforms for people for that voice to be heard. And um, I don't need to go into that right now, but I was on yesterday, the African Watch, and they graciously offered me an opportunity to speak. but. One of the things they said that struck my heart is that they said that the Global Watch is giving them a platform to have a voice. The voice of the nations must come forth from the watchmen crying out at their gates. And we, the reason for all of this is so that we can hear when the trumpet blows. Last week, we went through a phenomenal 24 hour prayer and thank you for so many of you who were on that and uh, god showed us this whole we all rely on the 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 internet now i mean it's just everywhere it's our you know our lives but what i saw was a vast kingdom that had not yet been taken by the christians and all of a sudden bam, suddenly the lord appears and something happened this shift happened and we are excited to know how this is going to help expand the voices expand the watchman cry expand the watchman call across the nations to help us live in this reality of being connected as we are all talking about it so the invisible walls that have been constrained us all of a sudden they crash down we reach jericho and we're going into the promised land and more things are coming forth. We don't know what the restructure or the, how this is going to play out, but we do know we trust the Lord he has his way. And right now he has our hearts. So not only is it a tent of meeting, but it's also a time of just shedding the old, um, mostly the old personal stuff that keeps our feet mired in the clay. And when God is calling us to please come forth, I need you at this hour. Do not let the enemy intimidate you. Don't let what man has spoken to you push you back. Know me. Know my heart. Know what I am saying to you. And most of all, know my love. And um, it is also a time when all those things come together where we get rid of the old you know, blinders in our lives. We purpose to meet with him. He is going to release a strategy. When Moses met with God that first day of the second month, last Saturday, a week ago Saturday, uh, he gave them tremendous instructions. I talked about that just a little bit before. God now wants our attention because it is about his intention. His intention. His intent for the nations now is coming forth. Economies are being shaken. Why? Because there's a restructure underneath. Why are the doors opening to presidents, to governments now? Help me. Help us, church. We need, we need your help. We can't do it on our own. This is happening before our very eyes. Habakkuk 2.2 talks about this strategy. It says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. The appointed time is now. There are people on this line that have carried burdens for years and years and years. 
it is now to call it forth and declare it into the atmosphere because I believe you will see a mighty God part the waters just like that and you will come into your promises. It is no longer woe is me or petitionary prayer. There's a place for that, but declare that which is not into being. God does nothing except that he announces it through the prophets. Come on, come on company of prophets. If we rail at our city gates, if we rail at our capitals, guess what? There will be a shift in the nations. God, God gave Fred a word early this year that we would be discipling uh, governments. And it's beginning to happen. Because why? Because we're declaring it. The doors of our, our capital are opening. The doors into our nation's capital are opening. Why? Because we're, we're knocking at that door. We're not relenting. It's not the, the three knocks and just give up. It's the knock that contends. It's the knock that is re unrelenting. This is the time. This is the appointed time for these strategies to come forth. And I believe even as a company of watchmen, we're going to have strategies that suddenly, boom, it comes into place like last week. And that, that whole initiative came together in 72 hours. And I, I was stunned at the response. And I, I thank you all for having ears to hear. You were not distracted, you were heard. And you came to the rally and cry. And we are gonna see great fruit from it, I believe it. So why is God taking us through all these things? Why is he calling us to meet with him, to let go of old things? and to receive new strategy. Why? Because he's preparing us and is already beginning to build momentum for a new corporate release, not only in the established church, but also in the prayer movement and in other industries. I believe we're gonna see a convergence coming out of this gate. And um, the prayer movement, I believe, is being called now more than ever to come out of our prayer rooms, we come, come out of our houses of prayer, and now to engage with the culture. We are not to get forget that. We're not to forget the one thing. In fact, that has got to be a driving force in, in the days ahead. We are not gonna reach the fullness of the Gentile church or the end time frontiers of the global harvest without prayer. Prayer and missions is going to converge in ways that uh, in fresh and new ways. And I believe a lot of it is going to have to do with relationship by relationship. The kingdom grows by relationship by relationship. So there is a new corporate expression coming out of this. In Isaiah 58, 6 through 12, we've just come out of a season of fasting. And what does it say? Is this not the fast I have chosen? And God goes on to say, uh, to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring your house to, of the poor and, and the cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. That's, that's the calling out of our own paradigms. There's invisible walls that have kept us separated. And now I believe the time has shown us God is, God is removing them. Those walls are coming down. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard, then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I am. Is that not awesome? Is that, is that not the gate we want to come out of after this season of fasting? This is a call to the corporate to get engaged with what we see around us. And it, and it goes on to say, and this is vital for the watch. We have an Isaiah 58, 12 fast on our websites as seed because I believe this company is coming forward. It is the company that says, if you take away uh, the yoke from your midst and the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, there it is. The gossip has to go away. The pointing of the finger has to go away. Why? Because God wants to make us repairers of the breach and restorers of streets to dwell in. There is a healing movement coming forward that is going to bypass all the yuck that the enemy has put in our pla in place to obstruct us. And there is a new fellowship 
of believers coming forth out of this that will uh, that people will say, hey, aren't they Christian? It looks like they have been with Jesus like they did in Acts 4. This is the time where Jesus must shine through us like never, ever before. Daniel uh, 10 through 12, 4 uh, is our key uh, scriptures for the hour that we are in. And right in the middle of it is Daniel eleven thirty two. 32. It says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. That is us, folks. That is us. God is calling us to be strong and of good courage in this day. And how are we going to do this? To go through this season where he's calling us back to meet with him, get rid of all the stuff that separates us from each other and from him, and, and, from him. And, and then get the strategy there's a corporate strategy coming forward that's going to push us together, that is going to mold us together in unique ways where there's recognition and understanding of the boundary lines, understanding of the gifts and callings, and hey, how we might work together effectively. So the people who know their God are going to be strong. Why? Because we're coming into this hour. God has declared it. The appointed time is upon us. Look at Daniel 12:4. It says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. There's actually been some studies done. In 1750, knowledge increased every 250 years. By 1900, it was every 50 years. By 1950, it was every 25 years. By 1980, every 12 years and it was a couple of years ago ibm came out with i believe it was ibm came out with a study that knowledge is increasing every 12 hours we are in the days of daniel and god is calling out now the daniels who engage with with our governments who will engage with our culture and pray seek a space to see a company of people coming coming out of this not polarized but moving together towards uh taking the kingdom into the culture of our day. God is coming with light and with wonder and with mighty exploits if we just keep our eyes focused on him and keeping it away from the distractions all around us. A new day is dawning. And we wanna go into that now. And uh, Fred, you're gonna need to direct us as we break off into these breakout groups to discuss what we've just talked about. So we're, we're going to go into breakout rooms, probably, uh, Sue, since there's almost 100 people on, we want to have breakout rooms of maybe five or so. So we're going to, we're going to have probably, you know, 20 maybe breakout rooms. Okay, well, welcome back, everybody. We lost a few people, uh, but not that many. Uh, they'll, they'll, so, um, they're still in cyberspace. Just watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So again, if you had if you had something in your in your group that was really striking, uh, if you can uh, put it into one or two sentences in the chat, that would be that would be wonderful. So um, so Sue, uh, help us here. Where do you want to, Where do you want to go with this? I think it's I, I think it's really important. I know in my my group, we were um, you know God is ca calling us. There it was uh, focus on where he's where he's calling us. And uh, but where he's calling us to the new things, there are some old things that need to be. We need to get, we need to um, old strongholds that we need to release that he's calling us to release. And uh, um, I I believe that one of the strongholds is the idea of what church actually is, and um, the fact that when we I know that at least in our church I'll just speak for our church that we are meeting com almost completely virtually now. That and and it's just making us realize that we can communicate with one another, and we can worship together, and we can um, pray together, and there is an anointing, and we can come into the presence of God together, and we don't have to be in the church building in order to do that. Now that's a that's a something that's I think probably obvious to us in a way, but. Um, but one of the things that I believe that God is releasing in this hour is the fact that the church is, God is accelerating 
the advancement of the kingdom and he's accelerating the growth of, 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 of the church and it can grow. We can use the, the, the tools of the day to, um, to advance the church and to release, uh, to release the people, to release the ecclesia of God. And, um, and this is something that we just need to ponder and, and just see it's all around us. But sometimes when we have a certain idea of the way that church is or the way that it's supposed to be, um, it kind of blocks us off. We're, we're, we're very much still, I think, saying, well, when things get back to normal, and I want to say that, that I don't believe that things are ever going to get back to normal in the way that they were before this virus. So we, we, need to be, we need to be saying, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I believe that God is opening up some doors and it really is, um, you know, we were in group 22. So we were, you know, believing that this is Isaiah 22, 22, that God is opening some doors that no man can shut and shutting some doors that no man can open. And that really is a part of the season that we're in. And, uh, and we need to be, as watchmen, we need to be looking out on the horizon and seeing and pondering that. So Sue, um, just uh, give us some of your thoughts. And then we, I think we should have a few people pray and then we'll, we'll, we'll end. Well, I'd like to hear from a few people some thoughts, and then uh, we need to pray. And I do have a worship song. I feel like it's important at this juncture. We've got people from a lot of different nations here. I think it would be amazing for us to just all join together and worship over the nation. Okay. So just a just a uh, just a uh, a, a note. It's um, we're five minutes to the hour, so we're gonna go we're gonna go over probably by fifteen it's, or twenty it's, minutes. It's, if we you, have to, such, you have to, you have to leave. We are in such a um, precipice, Fred. We are in such a precipice. We need to take this time. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So if you're, if you're, if you need to leave, um, that's fine. Uh, God bless you. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go a little bit over, uh, over the hour here. So, um, all right. Let's have, um, let's have a couple people. Uh, you know what? I'd like to just start. I'm just gonna call on a couple people here. Because uh, we've got a we've got a large number, large group. Um, I want to just ask uh, Karen Davis in from Mount Carmel in Israel, if you could just um, just share a thought about what you believe that God's doing. Just uh, just very briefly. You have to unmute yourself. There, you're unmuted. Yeah. Wow. What a blessing to be with everybody today. Um, I mean, I, I mean, some of the, the obvious things I think we, we just all see is this incredible interconnectedness of joining forces by using Zoom, by, by using the technologies that the church is, yep. is, is expanding really in our, the power of unity is really being released uh, on, a, on another level. And, and I just, I'm so thankful to Fred and Sue for, for what you've done to build this network and and i just see networks coming together with networks and and so yeah um and and i think what you just said about um the importance of declaration was that in our group or was that everybody was saying it that was in your group but it's but it's oh, it's oh, it's Karen, not yeah. for all of us yeah it's really in my spirit because that really hit the mark um yeah uh and and one of the things that i was praying uh in our short time was um you know the things that would hold us back and, uh, and often it's a spirit of intimidation that comes yep. in various forms that would keep us from declaring of, you know, of really um, taking the position that God has called each of us into. Um, and, and, and so much of what's going on right now, I think, is recognizing, you know, discerning the body and discerning yep. um, and, you know, the honoring of, of each calling and, and every stone being fitted together on the wall um, that there's no competition, that there's, um, there's just a, a harmony of working together that is really going to release the power of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Karen. Um, Jan Stephenson, you want to un unmute yourself and just tell us what you believe that God is doing in this hour? Well, you know, um, I just thought about the children of Israel when they got to the other side of the Red Sea and they came to the bitter waters, but they grumbled and they wouldn't take them. But it has been proven that those waters contained healing, purging minerals that if they 
had have drunk them, they would have been purged right then from the consumption of Egypt. And, you know, sometimes God calls us to take the bitterness because we need the bitterness and the sweetness for our soul. We can't just have the sweetness. And in Revelation um, 10, it talks about the angel giving us the book to eat. And the book can be bitter, but then it turns into honey. And it says here, um, I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it. And it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. The bitterness was in the stomach, but the sweetness came out of the mouth. And he said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. And I just believe in this time that, you know, we come out of here, we don't fall at the first hurdle, that we take this time to, to, to let the Lord put, put the sweetness in us um, through, through like what, what Sue was saying, the wounds of the past must become the wisdom of the future. Um, and that's what I believe God's saying to the body of Christ now. Don't fall at the first hurdle. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Um, could we, um, Edward uh, Matovu, can you, um, if you're there, can you uh, unmute yourself and tell us what you believe that God's saying during this hour? I'm going to unmute you. I'm unmuting oh, you. Go thank ahead. you. You're unmuted. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Fred. Uh, the, yes, definitely the issue of unity comes out strongly. Uh, the body of Christ cutting across nations and borders, but also a need for, for the church input uh, getting into the new wine skin. One of the things to, and to learn is the, the, the issue of times and seasons according to the biblical pattern. Yeah, uh, because what Susan shared on the the second month and the appointed times, it's uh, it's it's very rare uh, with the majority of the body of Christ now. So I think it would be good to to pray into it that that truth will continue to spread throughout the the body of Christ. Amen, amen. Yes, thank you, Christy. Um, Christy Childers, you want to unmute yourself and. Just tell us what you believe that God is saying during this hour. Hi, everyone. Yeah, um, I definitely see um, more people getting stirred for the fivefold ministry and in particular discipling apostles and prophets. And so I'm very eager and excited to see more of that happening. And that's ha happening naturally because we're in different environments. Um, and then I also see just greater revelation of Jesus as our bridegroom and this, um, you know, openness to studying the end times um, yeah. to where before maybe that was intimidating. Now, you know, it's a love story. It's, it's our bridegroom returning. And I just, I see this happening corporately across the people I know, just greater revelation of Jesus yep. as the bridegroom. Yeah, awesome. That's so good. Thank you, Christy. Um, Julie Wilson, you want to unmute yourself and tell us uh, what you believe? You, I believe you have a word or you got the Lord saying something. Well, um, we one of the gals saw um, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah just over a scroll. And I'm probably not saying, saying this, you know, the way she says, could say it, you know, with the scroll coming down he was just looking and watching but he was the scroll was under him and coming down the wall um, and had his eyes on us and, and the scroll he he wanted us to ask what he is seeing what he is doing um, and as we kind of prayed into that then um, Bev from California was receiving said she was receiving that scroll received like she's she's a scribe she works in the courts that there's new procedures that used to work that need to be deleted um that this the old spiritual strategies that that worked yesterday won't work today and asked to approach the court and the king 
to see and to know what he's doing. And then he he's put on my heart, even from the tech time, when he said, he just said one word to me, and that's firewall. And, you know, not, and I'm not going to say I'm not being techie, Christy, because I know better because you said, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm not saying that, but um, I'm saying that firewall is a big tech word. And for us, and, and uh, it's been given Zachariah to five, which have very much confirmed. It's been a word, I guess, uh, burning in her and, and please interject any of you that want to clarify or say anything but it reads and I will be to her a wall of fire all around declares the Lord and I will be the glory in her midst and just expanding on what that fire means you know yeah. and that the glory in her midst you know on all that we do in new strategies and communications that Shekinah manifest presence yeah. of that yeah. glory within. And the fire then brings all sorts of dimensions with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Julie. Uh, um, Johannes and Cornelia from Germany, do you want to unmute yourselves and just tell us what you believe that the Lord is saying? Thank you, Fred. Um, we are just in the process where we feel like what Christy was saying, that we are prepared as the bride without blemish and, and wrinkle. And uh, there's a lot of repenting going on personally, really to, to confess and to, um, to bring it forward to the Lord and corporately as well and for the country. So, uh, and we see major, major change in the politics and that people are being released in the fullness of the fivefold, that we can honor each other and um, yeah, just undergird each other in the ways where the, the individual has to go and stand as, I can't recall who was saying it, I think it was Karen, the different stones that we are really fitting in the wall together or in the house. So this yeah. is really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Cornelia. It's an exciting time. Um, uh, Jenny Hager, would you like to um, just tell us what you're what you're hearing from the Lord, what you believe that the Lord's doing during this time? Well, in our group, we were uh, group five, and there were five of us, so we thank God for the grace. <laughs> um, and we talked about uh, the unity that God is building, but also the importance of the family altar that God is really working on families and that uh, he's wanting to really uh, set us in as families so that whatever warfare is ahead, that we won't be vulnerable on the battlefield uh, to be attacked, that he is doing a refining work. And so with everyone shut in their homes, it's like uh, a bit of sandpapering is going on, but the Lord is, is in it bringing uh, the refinement uh, the other thing that um, we I'm feeling that wasn't on the call, but I, I do feel that the watchmen um, are being called now. I mean, this is to be, as Churchill would say, our finest hour. Uh, God is calling the watchmen to rise up. I think it's exciting that on our call, we're looking at different nations and God is saying the same thing. And that's the exciting thing. The watchmen are now called to watch and report what they're seeing, whether the church likes it or not. We, so we have to come to a place of dying to, to be loved and, you know what I mean, embraced by the church. We work for the Lord. We belong to the Lord. And in love, we're reporting as watchmen, this is what we're seeing and this is what we're reporting to you. So as I think somebody mentioned earlier or Sue mentioned, we have to break through that intimidation that that does not stop us speaking out and watchmen are often miles ahead of where the Lord is eventually uh, leading the church so that the word doesn't always make sense when the watchman reports it, but later on it does. Yeah, yeah. It's, I I think Sue um, Sue Rao, just hang on, Jenny. I I'd like to just have a few people pray uh, into that. I think we're starting with Jenny because I think this is so important. As as watchmen, there's a prophetic aspect to the watchmen, and um, and we have to remember as watchmen that 
This is not a popularity contest, and we're not trying to say things that are going to tickle the ears. But we are, we're, we're by definition, if we're forerunning, if we're saying what we're seeing out in the horizon that hasn't come to the city gates yet, um, uh, other people aren't going to necessarily, uh, they're not going to see it. They're not necessarily going to agree with it or believe it. But that's not, that's our job isn't to, um, it's not really to convince them. It's to, it's to say what we believe that God is doing and we need to pray into it as watchmen. So Jenny, why don't you just start off leading us in that direction? Because I think this is, we all know this, this is not nothing. I need to be reminded of it as a watchman because the Lord's going to be revealing increasingly things to us that are that He's about to do, and um, and we need to release it regardless of what the reception is. So go ahead, Jenny. Father, uh, we thank you for the calling and anointing upon our lives as watchmen. And Papa, we ask for forgiveness for when in the past we've just been intimidated, Father, by controlling and ruling spirits. And we've, we've, we've been in, in timidity, we've drawn back, we've kept ourselves in, in a safe place, Lord. Uh, we, we're not too um, enamored with lots of stones falling on us, Lord, when we give a word and people don't understand. But Lord, in this changing season, we believe that you are giving us the courage and the boldness and the faith and the trust in you, that you will look after us uh, when we do deliver what we are seeing that you are saying and the revelations that you are showing us father that uh whatever the result is father we work for you uh we we are your servants father so lord we thank you for the boldness in this season that you're giving us uh and that you're equipping us you're helping us to see clearly to hear clearly we thank you that your word is being confirmed by so many watchmen in, in different nations. So we bless you for this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Thank you, Jenny. David Rosen, would you like to unmute yourself and just pray into this, please, as well? Sure. Thank you. I want to read this scripture, Isaiah 4, I believe it's 4, 5 or 4, 4. The Lord will wash away. Four five. I'm sorry. Four five. I want to read. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble there a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. And over everything, the glory will be a canopy, and will be a defense for us. Lord, I thank you. This this word canopy is chupa, Father God. And Lord, let us as a global family come under the the chupa of your love. To renew, to renew love, to say yes to that which you've spoken to us about being watchmen on the wall, Father God, to say yes to renew our tour of duty in this, in this time as we, we come together, Lord God, and we uh, ascend that rampart together, Lord God, in this, in this moment to hear your voice together, Lord. And I saw under the hoppa a, a mingling of the different giftings and the callings coming together like never before. There was going to be a, a marrying of those things that the Lord was not going to allow us to achieve what he's called us to do without coming together under a chuppah, which is the covering of a chuppah is a prayer shawl. And I believe that he's calling us to a new level of intercession and covenant prayer together. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for this global family. We thank you for this pursuit of heaven. And we thank you for the intimacy that you're calling us into together as a global family. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, Cindy Goff, are, you're still there. Would you just um, would you just unmute yourself and just pray into this as well, please? Hey, um, Cindy, uh, you're from the Santa Maria Healing Rooms. I think we need to take every opportunity to keep the focus of healing going forth. So if you could impart the healing anointing as well. Yeah. So Lord, uh, we just come as one voice, one body, one mind, one love for you, Jesus. And we say that everything that you've revealed today is coming forth in great healing. Jehovah Rapha, your name, I am the God who heals you. 
we grab onto that, we invoke your name, Jehovah Rapha, body, soul, and spirit in the land and every place of our influence. We invoke your name, Jehovah Rapha. We say and declare and agree together as one that you are moving through us, that we are your voice, that we are your hands, that we are your feet, and we will give our love and devotion to no other but you. So we loose that healing yes, of Jehovah Rapha into each one this morning, into each family tree, into each area and region of influence. And we release the power of your majesty, of your glory, of your uh, amazing love that heals, that releases your heart in us. And I loose that right now. I loose that right now with great authority, with the seven spirits of God. We lose that, we bind together. And I just see right now, I'm having a vision of us like a fireball just exploding right now with signs and wonders, with miracles and healing power from heaven in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Cindy. I'd like to, um, I'd like to have uh, Shireen, I'd like to have you pray for a minute. Uh, you you're live in the US, but you're Iranian. And, and you, uh, I want you to pray as a representative of the closed nations of the world and, and, and what the Lord is doing there. And if you would just, um, if you would just lift that up in prayer. You're, um, you're still so muted. So Father, we oh, um, okay. surrender. Go ahead. It, it says I'm not muted. Okay, yeah, no, you're, you, we can hear you now, go ahead. Shereen, you're um, cutting in and out. Yeah, go ahead and turn off. Turn off your. Um, okay. Turn off the. Uh, Sorry, I'm in a video. bad place. Just turn off the that video. Better? Yeah, that's better. Go ahead. Okay, so Father, we go underground where you are. We go low and humble ourselves, and we go to that place where you meet us, one on one and with you and where you give instruction and we obey father you have made it clear and you've made it simple and so father that's exactly what we want to do father we come before you in every nation whether it's completely closed semi-closed and even open we submit ourselves we gladly and also ask you to give us a place where we're in absolute surrender to you, to your word, what you ask us to do, and that daily and hourly, even by the minute, we obey that very thing. Thank yeah. you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shireen. Millie, um, you're, uh, you are, uh, have been a missionary to Afghanistan and you're also a nurse, and you're also a uh, love the, the children and teacher of the children. Would you just, would you just pray into, into this from that perspective, please? You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the awesome privilege of partnering with you in these areas, and we bring the the nations of Afghanistan and, and the children of our world to you. Father, we thank you for the miracles that you're doing in Afghanistan. We thank you for the miracles that you're doing in the children in bringing forth dreams and visions. We thank you that you are rising, raising up children to uh, take uh, charge of, and to, you said a little child will lead them. And so Father, we pray for anointing on children. We pray for leaders who will allow them to be anointed, who will bring them forth into that giftings that these little ones have, Father, and their amazing faith. And we, we loose it, we loose it worldwide, Father. We loose it worldwide. We, we loose your power in Afghanistan. We loose your power in the children. Oh, hallelujah, shikiri on the Ramakaro. Hallelujah, we thank you that you, that nothing is impossible with you. And we thank you that for the protection over the children, protection over 
the little ones, that you deliver the little ones from the evil one. You deliver your people in Afghanistan from the evil one. Father, in Jesus' name, that you will thrust them out into the harvest field and give them protection and uh, a word behind them that says, this is the way, walk you in it. And they, you will spring the traps ahead of them and that you will equip them to win over every attack and temptation and that they will not be intimidated. No, we say no to intimidation for your people in Afghanistan. We say no to intimidation, even in the children, that they will not say, oh, I'm too young. No, they're not too young. They may be small, but the Holy Spirit's not small in them. In Jesus' name, release your power through the children and release Afghanistan from the hold of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you, Millie. We'd like to, I'd like to go to, um, back to you, Karen, um, because you are, um, you are uh, uh, an amazing worship leader and a, uh, a mother in the land of Israel. And uh, if you would just pray for, for, um, for Israel during this time, for what the church is doing in Israel. And I think we're going we're gonna to go back to you after that, Sue, and uh, some final thoughts, and then we'll end. So, Karen, if you just unmute yourself and... Um, and uh and just pray into that and we just we honor you we are so thankful for you and for your for everything that you're you're doing you're um you are the real deal and we love you <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah i mean there we're here hearing of um you know people are coming to the lord right now people are you know all of the the seeds that have been planted for some, in some people for years and years and years, um, they're seeking out the believers now. Wow. And people are actually coming to the Lord. And, um, you know, it's just, it is really a time of harvest. And, and um, so well, we want to we wanna thank you for that. We want to thank you that, um, Lord, that you are watering those seeds, Lord. You're even, you, you turn what the enemy meant for evil, you're going to turn to good, Lord. Um, and using the the challenges, the fear that people are walking through, uh, Lord, to um, cause the believers and the body of Messiah in the land to shine. Uh, I think Heidi just wrote, arise, shine, for your light has come, <laughs> and the glory of the Lord is risen. And I love what, what David Rosen said uh, from Isaiah 4, 4, that there's a canopy and there's a there's a glory oh, that it would be over every assembly in the land. And, and I also believe that the Lord, um, we spoke about unity earlier, and there's been such a need for unity in the body of Messiah in Israel. And uh, I'm praying that, uh, and I believe God is doing something deep because we're all, everybody is coming before the Lord. We're, we're all asking the Lord to search our hearts and know us and see if there be any hurtful way within us. And Lord, I, I thank you that there's a humbling that's taking place uh, in the body of Messiah um, from house to house. And I pray, Lord, and I believe that as we come out of this, that we're going to emerge with um, a greater brokenness and humility that will honor every part of the body and accept every part of the body in the land, Lord, that we can function um, as an effective uh, instrument to advance the kingdom in Israel, God. I just thank you that you are doing it in Jesus' name. I thank you for what you're doing across the generations in the body in Israel, God, that there's a, there is a transgenerational uh, honoring and, and, uh, and enriching of one another. And so, Lord, even as we're seeking you, in this time um, to be able to, to uh, let go of those things that are, 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 were not to carry forth, or that we would go forth with the things that are going to build the body. Yeah. And Lord, we pray specifically for Israel right now, but Lord, this applies to the body everywhere, Lord, that, that uh, we will be those that encourage, those that, that um, feed the next generation, and um, Lord, we just thank you. You're do, just working on so many levels now. And we thank you for it. And especially, Lord, for the harvest that's coming forth yeah. in Israel, that the body is going to grow in the Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Karen. Mm -hmm. Sue, back to you. Let's um, give us some final thoughts and, and, and we'll, um, we'll end. You have to unmute yourself, my dear. 
my my final thoughts are yes and amen. Thank you all for being on this <laughs> line. I I know it went longer than we uh, we wanted, but may God bless you in your day. I would love it if we hang on just for these next seven minutes to listen to the and worship over the nation. Get up off your seat, just worship the Lord, and lift His name high. This are, we are entering into glorious, glorious, glorious days. I love this song. I've been singing it all during this time. It's New Jerusalem. Until 